All right, everybody, welcome back to part nine. This is part nine. Again, I had the uh, the numbers mixed up there for uh, the last couple of parts, so I apologize about that. But this is part nine of my vinyl collection, and what we are going to start now through the rest of however many parts we get through, uh, we are going to start alphabetically with the artist. So, um, my, my music collection is a little bit more organized than my movie collection. Um, so, again, previously we did all the 7-inch singles, the 45s. We did the 12-inch singles with some 10 inches thrown in there. We did all the compilations and radio shows and comedy stuff. We did my mom's stuff, my brother's stuff, stuff that I got from my uncle and my grandparents, and all the soundtracks. So that's the stuff that was scattered about. Now on this shelf here uh, is all the artists. We start numerically. I think Three Dog Night is the first artist, and then we just run through. Obviously, we have Overflow because, you know, I can't stop buying records, and uh, we'll cover all that in... Uh, you know throughout the rest of the video but before we jump into this i did want to highlight some of the autograph pieces that i have a little bit closer i know we kind of looked at them uh from a, a thousand foot view so to speak so i did have a couple of cds autograph which i did uh again show these off but we have uh, they're both brother kane cds we have their second album seeds which is autographed by the band. So we have Damon Johnson's autograph right there. Um, that is Scott Collier, who I think was the drummer. That's David Anderson. And can never remember who the other guy in the band was at the time. Roman Glick. Okay, so that, that would be, I think, Roman Glick's autograph, which is cool. And then we have their last album, Wishpool, which is signed by all, let me back up a little, there we go, all the same people signed that. So, yep, um, have those. And then I do have some autographed records, as you have all seen before. Uh, these two were Christmas presents from my brother last year, so we have the 12-inch single for uh, My Fantasy by Teddy Riley featuring Guy uh, from the uh, Do the Right Thing soundtrack, and it is autographed by Danny Aiello, which is cool. And then we also have uh, Pat Travers autographed his live album, Go For What You Know, and the person that got an autograph took a nice little snapshot here and included it, which is pretty cool. So uh, these were both Christmas gifts. I do have another copy of this in the collection. And then the other two that I have, uh, well, I actually have another one. It's just in here because I don't really care that it's autographed, but we'll cover that when we get there. But we do have, uh, of course, you all know about this one, the Peter Chris uh, 1978 solo album, which I got signed by him at uh, New Jersey HorrorCon earlier this year. And then... I found this at one of the local record stores that I go to. We have the first Britney Fox album autographed by the original lineup, which is cool. Um, my name is not Kara, uh, but it is made out to Kara. So we have uh, Johnny D right there, Michael Kelly Smith, and then uh, Dizzy Dean Davidson, and then uh, Billy, yeah, Billy Child. So that is autographed by all four original members, which is cool. And uh, I do have a little bit of soft spot for them because they're from Philly, so can't complain. Um, so that is, again, there's one more autograph record that I have, but I don't care who it's autographed by. It just, I bought it because it was a bootleg and I wanted it. I didn't really care that the fact that it was autographed. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into the shelf here. So. What the plan is, I don't know, I'm going to try this first part and then we'll go from there. But the plan is to cover all four of the squares in one part instead of doing, oh, part one, part two, part three, and then these videos are 5,000 parts. So 
I will try to move quickly, um, not too quickly. Again, as always, if anyone wants to see something specific, uh, just mention it in a stream or something, or if you want like a, a paid request on something, go for it. But let's get into it. Enough about that, and we'll start talking about this. So first up, we have the best of Three Dog Night. Love Three Dog Night, great band. And we'll start just kind of making a pile, make this a little bit easier. Then we have the Four Seasons, second vault of Golden Hits, of course, Frankie Valley, which I heard that his shows are not live because I have been kind of curious to want to go see him, but I heard that uh, his shows are not really live. They they play a lot of backing tracks, and uh, they have like other people that kind of sing for him and stuff. I don't know how true that is, but I don't know. All right, so now we are going to get into ACDC. Uh, you guys know my thoughts on ACDC. Obviously, I have a, a, a deep love for that band. And, uh, I mean, almost half the shelf is ACDC, so there you go. But we have the American release of High Voltage, which I'm surprised I got this for, you can still see the sticker. Surprise! I got it for 15 bucks. And Kim Butterworth, you ain't getting your record back. Now it's in pretty decent shape. It's got some typical wear and tear for a record that's you know 46 years old, but you know it plays fine. So that's really kind of all that matters to me as long as it plays. And then we have the American release of Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Now I know that I put this second. Uh, but chronologically, in America, this came out after Back in Black because they, the record company, Atlantic Records, they didn't have faith, so they just didn't release it here in America. <laughs> so, yeah, this didn't come out till after Back in Black, and it caused a lot of confusion. People were like, wait, there's two singers in ACDC, and yeah. Um, but the weird thing is, this still has the 1976 copyright, and it says... Um, all selections recorded in 1976. And then it says, Problem Child, previously released on Let There Be Rock, which Let There Be Rock is the technically the third album, but in America it was the second album. So there you go. And then it says, Rocker, studio version, live version, previously recorded on If You Want Blood, which again had come out uh, before this in the United States. But I always, again, I always found it weird how Yes, it came out after Back in Black, but it still had the original copyright date. So I guess they uh, they made the records or whatever and just didn't release them. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. But then we do have Let There Be Rock, which is the third album. But love. Again, I said in the, the CD stuff, when I was a kid, Brian Johnson was my favorite, but as an adult, I think I've gravitated more towards Bon Scott because he definitely had that blues singer trapped in a rock singer's body, if you know what I mean, and um, just they were so raw and they were, I think, a little bit more heavy in the early days and they were just hungry to get out there and let people know what they have to offer. And I'm not saying that they didn't have that with Brian Johnson, but I think they had it a little bit more with Bon Scott. Then we have my favorite Bon Scott album, Power Rage or Power Ridge or whatever you want to call it. It's all Greek to me, but this is the original American pressing. And then we have the Canadian pressing, which is on red vinyl. And it does have, uh, in addition to being my favorite Bon Scott album, it has my favorite Bon Scott ACDC song, which is Gone Shootin', which of course was featured in Beavis and Butthead to America. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, and uh, the place that I got this is in Frederick, Maryland, which is about, maybe about an hour from here. Yeah, but yeah, it's about an hour from here. Um, and because it was colored, the guy was like, oh, like the colored records don't play as well as the black ones. I'm like, never heard that before, so yeah. <laughs> I think that was the same guy, and then he said, oh, yeah, same with the picture discs. I'm like, well, I've never had issues with either, so maybe it's just you. And then we have the final... Bon Scott album, which is Highway to Hell. And of course, we have none other than Back in Black, one of the all-time greatest selling albums ever. And it is a great album, so there you go. Let me take a little swig of tea here. And then we have the follow-up for those about to rock, which is a great follow-up in my opinion. Um, I think it's just as good as Back in Black. Awesome gatefold cover there. <clears throat> and ACDC, I think, especially when you get in the Brian Johnson era, have a lot more underrated songs than they do of the ones that everybody knows, at least in my opinion. And we have Flick of the Switch. Love this album as well. And we have 74 Jailbreak, which this was uh, basically like an American exclusive. It's an EP. It just features songs that were already released in Australia, like on the uh, Australian version of High Voltage and Dirty Deeds and stuff like that. Uh, so like Jailbreak and uh, Soul Stripper, Baby Please Don't Go, all that stuff was already released in other parts of the world. And then we have... Fly on the Wall, love the, love, always love the artwork on this, and a lot of good stuff on here too. Shake Your Foundations is probably my favorite song on this album. And then we got another great album cover, Blow Up Your Video, which, uh, there, there's good stuff on here. Heat Seeker is one of my favorite ACDC songs. Uh, Rough Stuff is a really good one, that's the way I want to rock and roll. have the Razor's Edge, which this is an original American pressing, which was not as expensive as I thought it was going to be. Like, it wasn't cheap, but it was not $100, <laughs> because you know how these original pressings go. So there's that. And I do not have Ball Breaker and Stiff Upper Lip. Those are the only two ACDC albums that I don't have the original American pressings. I would love to get the Australian pressings of High Voltage Dirty Deeds, uh, Let There Be Rock, Highway to Hell, because the artwork's different. Uh, they're just not in my price range right now, and I'm kind of focusing on other things for the collection, so yeah. But one day, one day I will have those, just not today. And then we have Black Ice, which I was, uh, I think, a junior in high school when this came out, and it was a big deal, because ACDC had not done an album in eight years and uh, rock and roll train was a big single and it's actually one of my favorite acdc songs but uh this was a big deal when this album came out and it's it's actually really good i really like most of that album and then we have rocker bust which this is the there you go lenticular cover i think this is a european pressing and it is a gatefold very simplistic artwork, but it that's why it works, because it's simplistic. And it does have a booklet in here, which is really nice. And it also, I think it's inside the sleeve, but it also came with a CD copy of the album, too. But Rocker, Bu Rocker Bus is a good single. Play Ball was a good song. Uh, got some Rock and Roll Thunder. There's some good stuff on there as well. And honestly, I'm not saying this just because I'm talking about ACDC, but I don't think they've ever had a bad album. That's just me. And then we have their latest release, Power Up, which I really like this album too. Uh, Shot in the Dark is that classic ACDC guitar riff, you know, good stuff. And really nice gatefold here. And this is a tribute to Malcolm Young, of course. 
And this is the Walmart exclusive red opaque. I don't know why they say opaque, but they do <laughs> vinyl. But yeah, this one's for, there we go. This one's for Malcolm. So still, still uh, very missed. You know, five, it's actually the five year anniversary of his passing was the other day. Then we have their first live album, If You Want Blood which is the only official Bon Scott live album. And then we have live at River Plate, I think is how you say it, in, uh, I think, Brazil, if I'm not mistaken. And this is still sealed, um, but this is the, the red pressing. And I do not have ACDC Live from the 90s, which in my opinion is one of the best live albums ever, but I don't have that on vinyl. And then, of course, we have Who Made Who, which I put this as a compilation because technically it is. Um, it has the stuff from the movie, which was just Who Made Who and DT were, and Chase the Ace were the new songs. Um, everything else for those about the rock shake your foundations hell's bells uh sink the pink ride on of course that was all stuff that was previously released but technically it's a compilation album which acdc i don't think really ever other than who made who and the iron man 2 soundtrack i don't think acdc ever officially released the best of so there you go and then we have a bootleg of, now it's all the bootlegs, but live from the Atlantic Studios. I have this officially on CD, but the uh, the actual like radio broadcast version is so expensive to find, and uh, I don't want to pay you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to get it, so I'll stick with this uh, $25 bootleg that I found uh, just to have a, a version on vinyl, you know? Um, like I said, I do have the official CD that ACDC put out, but uh, it's a great show, and I wanted it on vinyl. So there was a guy, um, there was a record store near where my grandparents lived, and uh, he had it, and he wanted like two grand for it, I think, or maybe more, and it wasn't even complete because... Uh, in order for it to be complete, you have to have like the re the letter from the record company, and there's like a I think like a sticker or something I don't know, and it didn't have any of that. It was just the the records, and he wanted like two grand, and I'm like I'm good, so yeah. Oh well. Anyway, then we have uh, Ace, uh, Rock goes to college live in Colchester, October 28, 1978. This is the BBC uh, radio broadcast, which. This is a, a heavy, heavily bootlegged ACDC show, both audio and video. And I think it's on yellow vinyl. It is, because the sticker on it is yellow. So, there's that. And it does have a uh, replica of the tour book, which is cool, too. And then we have, uh, what is this? Day on the Green, number three, Monsters of Rock, Oakland, California, July 21st, 1979, which is a tour that they did with AC, or Aerosmith, Ted Nugent, uh, St. Paradise, and uh, which St. Paradise, I think, was the band that Derek St. Holmes was in after he left Ted Nugent for the first time. Uh, well, actually, that would have been the second time. And then um, Mahogany Rush. And I think this was one of the last Aerosmith shows, uh, well, I don't, you know what I mean, with Joe Perry. So, and this is on blue vinyl. So we got a nice translucent blue. But a little bit of marbling in there, which is cool. Then we have, uh, it says, it's called Dirty Deeds Down Under, but it's actually not recorded there. Excuse me, this is actually recorded in Towson, Maryland, and it's on a nice clear splatter of vinyl. It says 1976, but it was actually recorded in 79, but 
Y'all know how bootlegs are, so. And then we have Paris in Flames, uh, Pavilion de Paris, November, or excuse me, December 7th, 1979. This is the afternoon show, because back then they would do, you know, one show in the afternoon and one show at night. And this is on white vinyl. I'm sure some people will be offended by that, but you can kiss my ass. And then one of the last uh, shows with Bon Scott. Then we're getting into the Brian Johnson stuff. We have Tokyo First Night 1981. And this is on, again, a nice translucent blue vinyl. Well, I made up for it. I said white, and then I said trans, so that, that, that balanced it out, right, guys? <laughs> I'm sure some fucking wackadoo will get mad. Some wackadoo always gets mad about what I do. What a surprise, but, you know, they're cowards, as we all know. Anyway, moving on. We have Sketchbook, which is uh, 19, October 5th, 1983, tour rehearsal in Los Angeles. This is number 465 out of 500. And this is on translucent yellow vinyl. And then we have a lesson about to rock Belgium 1986, uh, January 25th of that year. This is number 60 out of 100. And this is on a translucent green vinyl with some marbling in there. And then uh, we have Bad Boys in Rome. Uh, uh, don't, uh, there it is. <laughs> uh, September 5th, 1984. And this is number 113 out of 300. I think this is the last, the latest ACDC bootleg that I've got. And this is on like a gray with like a pinkish purple. And then the second record is gray with like a different like color splatter which is cool and i do like the packaging i like how it opens up like a pizza box you know i thought that was cool i have a couple records like that it says it was recorded at the uh the the Rome Baseball Stadium. I didn't realize they like baseball in Italy. <laughs> well, actually, no, that's not true because uh, Mike Piazza, who used to be a catcher for the Mets and everything, everybody else, <laughs> um, he does a lot. Like he, after he retired from baseball, he moved to Italy, which is cool, and he does a lot of like charity work, and you know he'll play like baseball games with disabled people and stuff like that so I guess yeah baseball is uh, popular in Italy and then we have French Kiss and Dynamite this is on the French flag uh, edition vinyl you all know how I feel about the French and this is number 379 out of 450 so actually it's on red vinyl because each uh, like number is a different color but that's okay. Fuck the French. April 6, 1988 of that year. And I'm not showing the color because, again, fuck the French. <laughs> and then we have a two-record set here. This is uh, Estadion Stockholm, March 22, 1991, the Razor's Edge Tour. So it's a two-picture disc set here. I guess I'm going to get in trouble because I showed Angus's butt. And then... There's the back, and then this is disc two. 
So, yeah, it took me a while to complete this, but I have the, the whole show, which is awesome. Then we have a 10 inch here. This is uh, Living for Rock and Roll, Chicago, 1996. This is number three out of 10. Which I should put this, yeah, I'm going to take this out and put it with these singles, and this is on clear. Because technically it is a single. I'll put it with the 12 inch singles, so. Because I have a couple Iron Maiden ones in there, might as well put that one over there. Then we have another two record set here. This is uh, Shot Down in the Big Easy, New Orleans Broadcast, 1996. Uh, this is a official pressing, again. Uh, ones that come out in Europe where they take the radio broadcast masters and put it out there again The copyright is a little bit different in Europe, so they're able to get away with it. The artwork is exactly the same Volume 1 has a red motif. Volume 2 has a blue motif And then we have Train Kepa Rollin Which was recorded at the Wachovia Center up in Philly November 17th, 2008 and this is on good old regular black vinyl. I think all vinyl is white, if I'm not mistaken, and then they add the color in it. So I, I believe that is correct. And then we have Anything Goes in Leipzig. I think that's how you say it. Um, March 5th, 2009. And again, good old regular black vinyl. But yeah, I think all vinyl is white, and then they add the color. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm not an expert on vinyl. But. And then we have another set here. This is a three-record set. Uh, took me a while to complete this, but I finally did it. It's called Hired Gun, and this was recorded. Uh, Works your Belgium, uh, May 16, 2016. There is a bonus track from Prague from May 22nd, but of course this is with Axl Rose on the vocals. So we have the first set, which is Rock and Roll Damnation. And this is, they're all different colors. This one is translucent pink vinyl. And to speed this up, I'll fuck with the sleeves later. And then we have volume two, which is Touch Too Much. Which this is on translucent yellow vinyl. And then last but certainly not least, volume three, which is Riff Raff. And this one is also on translucent yellow vinyl. And then we have, this is the uh, Nutcracker Sweet Ball Breaker Outtakes. Uh, I was talking about this in the 7-inch singles because this is the complete outtakes on here. And... Uh, it does. It did. It did. It did come with a CD copy. I just put it with the CDs. So yeah, because it had its own sleeve and everything. And uh, one more, one more ACDC here, and then we'll be moving on. Uh, this is uh, VH1 Uncovered. This is all of the uh, rehearsals. They did a thing on VH1, and this is that. And I think this is a color, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is like an orange vinyl, which is cool. And it did, uh, it, it's in the other room. We covered it in the, I think the CD stuff, but it did come with a DVD of the event, which is cool. So that's it for ACDC. Next, uh, we have a bootleg, because uh, this was sent to me for free, because I bought... There were, there were a couple people I was buying bootlegs from for a while, and then they just disappeared on eBay. I don't know if they got caught or something happened or whatever, but I would, you know, just always, every week when I was getting paid every week, and I'm about to be getting paid every week again, so maybe we'll get st start getting some more of these. We'll see. Anyway, um, 
but sometimes they would send me like free records because hey you, you keep buying you know you buy so much and here's a token of appreciation so I got sent uh, Predator by Accept which is one of their 90s albums and this is on black vinyl just wanted to make sure so I was like alright cool and then the other one that was sent to me for free was an Iced Earth record so we'll cover that later but I do like Accept um, Iced Earth I don't really know much about other than the fact that the was the guitar player the bass player he got busted in the you know January 6th so yeah and then uh, we got Ace Fraley stuff here we have the 1978 solo record this is the original pressing it does include the poster and then we have a uh, picture disc reissue this is a Russian pressing sorry for any of those of you that may be offended by the word Russian but thought that was cool I do want to get there's a, a blue vinyl because they did different colors like Peter Chris's was green I uh, would like to get the, uh, the color pressings as well at some point then we jump into his solo stuff we have Fraley's Comet which, I mean, this was a good album, but Trouble Walking should have been the first album. But there is a lot of good stuff on here. Um, rock Soldiers is great. Breakout's great. Into the Night, We Got Your Rock, Calling to Use. Those, Stranger in a Strange Land is a good song. But Ace had a great has had a great solo career. I know he's always putting out music. He's always working on music. He's always touring, so I'm glad that you know he's out there doing his own thing and honestly I think that's just the way he likes it I think he likes to be the captain of his own ship he doesn't want to answer to people and you know he just wants to do his own thing and hell I'm all for it so hopefully one of these days I'll get to see Ace live I have not um, and uh, like to meet him I missed him at Chiller I did again I did he walked past me at Chiller and I said hi but I don't think he heard me because I know he has a lot of hearing issues, but um, or maybe he just ignored me. I don't know, <laughs> but I wasn't rude or anything. I just said, "Hey, Ace," and that was it. So I don't know. Anyway, then we have the Live Plus One EP, which um, this one, the first album and the next album, I got for like twenty bucks. Like the guy was just trying to get rid of them and. I message him, I'm like, uh, is it for the three records or what? He goes, oh yeah, it's for all three. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so, And they're all in pretty good shape. Can't complain. They play fine. Um, yeah, so it's four live tracks, and then it has a uh, studio, which was an outtake from the first album. And then we have the second album, Second Sighting, which uh, there is some good stuff on here, but... Like, Eddie Trunk worked on this album, and he always talks about how, yeah, there was a lot of changes from the first album to the second album, and things were going on, and yeah, you could definitely tell that there was two different things happening at once. And then we have the original pressing of Trouble Walking, which for whatever reason, this one has severely gone up in price. This one is crazy to get a hold of. Uh, I did get it for a decent price. It was not cheap, but I finally got it. And then what happened after I bought that? Uh, Record Store Day decided they wanted to reissue the album. So now my shit's falling. And uh, this was in 2020. So I got that album. And then not long after, this got announced for Record Store Day. I'm like, well, what the fuck? So, yeah. But uh, this is, I think, orange. It just says colored. But yeah, I'm glad that they reissued this. And like I said, this should have been the first A solo record. I love this album. Shot Full of Rock is great. Do Ya is great. I, I like Ace's version of Hide Your Heart better than Kiss's version. Uh, the title track is great. Too Young to Die is good. So a lot of good stuff on here. And again, that should have been Ace's first solo record. Then we have Origins Volume 1, which this is the FYE exclusive. I think the only thing that makes it exclusive is the border is a different color. I swear, I believe that's the only thing that made it exclusive. Um, but 
really enjoyed this uh, little story here. The first thing I did after I graduated boot camp from the Army was listen to this album. Because I before I went in the military, I knew that Ace was working on a covers album. And the first thing I did, I was sitting at the airport. I was waiting to get my flight to go out to Colorado. And I'm like, oh, Ace's album is probably out. It was. It was the first thing I did after I graduate was listen to this album. And uh, if I ever meet Ace, try to get him to sign this and maybe the 78 solo. Hopefully I get to tell him that story and, you know, we'll go from there. But really cool gatefold, a lot of cool stuff in here. Again, uh, really enjoy this album. The covers on here are great, and he's got some guest stars. Uh, he did a cover of Cold Gin, which he wrote, but he did not sing the original version, so it's cool to hear him finally sing it on a studio recording, because he always did it live. Um, but the rest of the album, his cover, the rest of the album is great. I can't talk. His cover of Fire and Water with Paul Stanley is awesome. Emerald that Slash plays on that, the Thin Lizzy song is great. Uh, he also did a cover of Parasite that Kiss did. Again, he wrote it, but he did not sing it. So again, it's cool to hear that. But uh, I, I think he's doing Volume 3. I think that's the next solo album, so I do look forward to that. And then we have the uh, EP, or yeah, this is the EP of Bronx Boy, which I really like that song from the Space Man album. And this is on white and black marble vinyl, record store day. Uh, no, I don't think this was a record store day. I think it was just exclusive, online exclusive or something. Um, but there's a remix of the song Reckless from Space Invader. And then you have White Room and Cold Gin from the Origins album. But that was, what, 20 bucks? Yeah. 25 bucks. I'll get over it. And then we have... Uh, speaking of Spaceman, we have Spaceman. This is the Record Store Day 2019 uh, picture disc, which does come with a poster. I did like this album. Um, I would say I like Space Invader a little bit more. I need to get that on vinyl. I think, you know, after Trouble Walking would probably be my favorite, and then maybe Space Invader. If or no, yeah, if we're talking the non-cover albums, yeah, I, that's how I would do it. But. I did like this. There's some good songs on here. Again, Bronx Boy, Your Wish Is My Command is a good one. Pursuit of Rock and Roll was a song that he wrote for Psycho Circus that never got recorded, so he finally got to record it, which is cool. <coughs> excuse me. And then we have... <coughs> excuse Jesus. We have Origins Volume 2. This is on blue and white vinyl, which I think was like an independent record store exclusive. But really good follow-up. Again, great covers on here. Uh, no Kiss, or no, there is one Kiss song, She, because again, Ace wrote She, but he did not sing on it, so he got to do that, which is cool. But the rest of the stuff on here is cool. Space Trucking, 30 Days in the Hole, uh, a lot of good stuff. And then we have... The limited edition picture disc record store day 2020 of uh, Space Trucking. Speaking of Space Trucking, which is cool. And then it has some other stuff on there as well. <clears throat> and then we have another record store day. Ace is always doing stuff for record store day. Actually, record store day, Black Friday, coming up later this week here, they're doing an exclusive picture disc of Origins Volume 2 that I would like to get. So. But this is Record Store Day 2019 uh, live. So this is uh, Hammersmith Odeon, London, England, March 19th, 1988. This was the live plus four video that came out. This is the audio of the concert portion on there. So there's that. And then the last ace that we have here is a bootleg. A, a, a new bootleg just came out. I haven't gotten it yet, but... Uh, this one is Back in the Groove, live at Lemoore in Brooklyn, which was a, a club back in the day, March 9th, 1985, which is cool. So that's all the A stuff. Now we're going to jump into uh, one of my favorite bands of all time, my favorite band that is currently active, and that is none other than Aerosmith. So let's do it. 
So we have the first album. This is the original pressing with the uh, air. Instead of walking the dog, it says walk in the dig. That is a mistake. But uh, this has really gone up in price. I think I paid like 50 bucks to get this. It's in pretty decent shape. It plays fine. But I wanted the, the air cover because I'm weird. <laughs> and then I have the reissued version. This is after Dream On became a big hit. Because what people don't realize, Dream On was not a hit when it first came out. It wasn't until after Toys in the Attic came out. They reissued Dream On as a single. And then it blew up. And then they reissued the first album to where it says featuring Dream On different cover on the front and uh, it does now say walk in the dog instead of walk in the dig so there you go and then we have get your wings which is probably you know one of Aerosmith's most underrated albums because most of the songs on here never get talked about the only ones that get talked about is same old song and dance and Seasons of Wither, occasionally Lord of the Thighs, everything else, uh, Spaced and Woman of the World, I don't think they've ever played live. Oh, and Train Kept a Rollin', but Train Kept a Rollin's a cover. So, uh, SOS Too Bad, they used to play back in the day, and uh, Pandora's Box was played a little bit back in the day. And then we have the Quadraphonic Mix. Now, that what people are like, what is that? Quadra stereo, two channels of sound. Quadraphonic, four channels of sound. Um, I can tell the difference when I play it, when I play the stereo mix and I play the quad mix, but you need, like, there's a cartridge that you need for it, and you need four speakers. Obviously, I have four speakers already, so I can kind of hear the difference in it, but yeah. And then we have my favorite Aerosmith album, Toys in the Attic. Again, we have the Quadraphonic pressing, which Quadraphonic did not really do anything. <laughs> um, so, yeah, because a lot of people back then could only afford, you know, if they could afford two speakers and, you know, the equipment and stuff like that. So Quadraphonic was only around for a little bit and it's kind of an obscurity now. So, But now it doesn't matter because, you know, Dolby Digital is what, five fucking channels of sound and now they got seven channels of sound so it kind of it's been you know outdone twice now so there you go and then we have what's a lot of people's favorite album rocks which is another great album and then hey guess what i also have the quadraphonic mix <laughs> so yeah Then we have an album celebrating its 45th anniversary this year, Draw the Line, which is, again, underrated. Uh, the only one that really gets talked about from this is the title track, but I Want to Know Why is a great song. Bright Light Fright, which is the first time Joe Perry sung lead. Kings and Queens is one of my favorite Aerosmith songs. Sight for Sore Eyes is great, and their cover of Milk Cow Blues is fucking awesome. And then we have another great album, Night in the Ruts. Even though Joe Perry doesn't play on a lot of it, I still love this album. Actually, earlier today I was in the car running an errand and uh, Bone to Bone, Coney Island Whitefish Boy came on, which is a great song. And then an album celebrating its 40th anniversary this year that will never get the respect that it deserves, Rock in a Hard Place. I don't care. The Joe pa I love Joe Perry. I love Brad Whitford. But this album is awesome. Uh, Rick Dufay, I don't think, actually plays on it. I think he was just there. Uh, I think Jimmy Crapo plays everything on the album. But uh, I have a bunch of bootlegs from this tour. Yeah, they were fucked up on drugs and everything, but they still played good. And all this bullshit revisionist history. This album sucks. This era sucks. They're wrong, because this is awesome. And then we have... Done with mirrors, which yes, it's backwards on purpose because you had to hold it up to a mirror. This was the beginning of the comeback for Aerosmith. There is a lot of really good shit on this album. I don't care. I love their version of Let the Music Do the Talking, which was on the first Joe Perry record. Uh, She's on Fire is a great song. My Fist Your Face. There's a bunch of good stuff on here. 
And then, of course, if they want to behave, the one that started the comeback, permanent vacation. Which, there's a lot of really good stuff on here. And this is celebrating its 35th anniversary. And then we got Pump. Love this album, too. This is a European pressing. And then we have the Euro original European pressing of Get a Grip, which this honestly is my favorite album of the MTV era because I remember being a kid and a lot of these songs were really, really huge when I was a kid. Like, I remember seeing the videos, you know, for Crazy and Crying and, you know, uh, Living on the Edge and just a lot of good stuff on here. And then... We have Honkin' on Bobo, which was their blues cover album. This album just got fucking buried. Like, I don't understand. Uh, I've always really liked this. You know, um, their covers of Roadrunner, Shame, 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 Baby, Please Don't Go, um, You Gotta Move, There's a Studio Version of Stop Messing Around. I have always really liked this. I don't know why they just did not give a fuck when it came out, but oh well. And then we have Music from Another Dimension, which this is actually celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. And this album, again, it got buried when it came out. There is some, like, there's some good songs. Um, Legendary Child, I actually really like. That was supposed to be in one of the shitty G.I. Joe movies. But they kind of just buried this album for whatever reason. And this is a gatefold. We got some really awesome artwork in there. And uh, they are both on translucent red vinyl. But will Aerosmith put out any new music? Will will we know for sure? I don't think so. I don't know. Um, I know Joe Perry, when I saw him back in July, said they were going to do a reissue of his latest solo album and nothing has come out. So God only knows what's going on. Um, you never know with Aerosmith. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what these guys are going to do. All right, now we're getting into all the live stuff. So we have The Road Starts Here. This was a record store day title from last year, which was of a live rehearsal that they recorded and found the tape. Uh, Joe Perry said, the management said, there's more of this stuff coming, hopefully soon, because this was awesome. This was really cool to hear. And then, of course, you got to have Live Bootleg, one of the greatest live albums of all time, at least in my opinion. I mean, look at that. Uh, awesome stuff. I don't have the poster. Uh, this did not come with the original poster. Uh, one of these days, I'll try to track it down. And then we have a good two-pack here, Classics Live and Classics Live 2. Uh, again, really enjoy all the live Aerosmith stuff. Uh, live bootleg would be my favorite, but these are just as good, in my opinion. And then we have Aerosmith's Greatest Hits. This is uh, the alternate cover because the logo is supposed to be on the other side, which we'll see in a second here. The only thing I don't like is they used all the single edits. It's like, come on, guys. And then we have, with the proper logo this is the walmart exclusive white vinyl and when this popped up like when this first came out i was like what the fuck like walmart is selling vinyl in 2019 when this came out so this was the beginning of you know walmart selling vinyl again and i just couldn't believe it i was like what the fuck is going on <laughs> and then we have gems which this is a compilation. This I actually really like because this is more of the heavier stuff. So you have Rats in the Cellar, Licking a Promise, Chip Away the Stone, No Surprise, Nobody's Fault, which is one of my favorite Aerosmith songs. So this is like the really good stuff, at least in my opinion. And then we have Big Ones, which is a great compilation of the MTV stuff. I think this is a Brazilian pressing because it never came out in America, but love this compilation. 
I had it on the CD many years ago, which is cool. All right, now is all bootlegs, like actual bootlegs, not live bootleg. But we have um, live at Paul's Mall, Boston, March 20th, 1973, one of my favorite Aerosmith bootlegs. Unfortunately, this is not the complete show. I have the complete show on CD, um, but this is one of my absolute favorite Aerosmith shows. Just so raw and hungry, and, and you could tell that they uh, they were special, and they still are. And obviously, you know, almost 50 years later, we still are feeling that. So, and hopefully, we can feel it as long as the guys have life in their bodies. And we have another one of my favorite Aerosmith bootlegs. This is Rattlesnake Shake, which was recorded at the Counterpart Studios, I think in Cincinnati. Uh, it says 74, it's actually 73, but love this bootleg. I wish that I still had it on CD, but I don't. So then we have Live Bootleg Volume 2. Uh, I have this on CD. Uh, this was recorded uh, at my father's place, which was a club on Long Island, July 2nd, 74. And then the last song is a bonus track, Chicago, March 23rd, 1978. So, cool stuff. Then we have it's the same show on two different bootleggers, but the track listing is different. So, we have... Uh, this was the Central Park show from 75, which I have on CD. So we have Look Homeward Angel, and then we have Rock This Way. So the difference is this one has Write Me a Letter, which is not on Rock This Way. Um, this one has Walk This Way, which is not on Rock. No, Walk This Way. No, Walk This Way is on this one. Um, no More, No More is on this one. Uh, Walking the Dog and Train Kept a Rolling is on this one. So if you want to get the complete show, you got to get both of these. And then we have Stamp which is the, I believe, the rarest Aerosmith bootleg on vinyl because it's only 25 copies. I don't know where this was recorded, sorry. Actually, no, I think that was the first tour of Japan, so it might have been 76. Yeah, because this is 77, so actually 77 was their first time. So anyway, then we have Spirit of Boston, which this was recorded in Japan uh, January 31st and February 9th, so this was that first Japanese tour that Aerosmith did. And then we have Five the Hard Way, Las Vegas, November 25th, 1977. Then we have a official, or excuse me, official bootleg like the Paul's Mall one, Boston Club 1980. So this is without Joe Perry, but I have this on CD as well, and I love this show. Again, yes, Aerosmith is Joe Perry and Steven Tyler, but when he was not there and Jimmy Crapo was there, it was still good. And is this a regular vinyl or is this... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's black vinyl. Wasn't sure if this one was a different color or not, but it's not. So. We have uh, Bang at the Moon, the classic 1978 radio broadcast. Again, uh, one of the official bootlegs. And this is on clear vinyl. And is this the, uh, which show is this? I think this is the show, um, I think it's from Ohio. I have this on CD as well. But uh, this is another classic Aerosmith show. I wish that the Philly show, because like I have that on CD. I wish that was on vinyl, but it's not. Maybe one day it's on clear. Oh God, something's happening. <laughs> oh, so I had these backwards because that was supposed to go first. Because 1978 happened before 1980. I'm sorry, guys. I had them out of order. 
Yeah, because this is all stuff. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll fix it when I put them away. Then we have Get You Let Out Mama. No, this is the Ohio show. I think Bang at the Moon. That might be the Philly show. I'm not sure. But this is a good one, too. I have this on CD. Again, just them 70s. Aerosmith, you never knew what was going to happen. You never knew if people were going to overdose on stage or kill each other. So, yeah, good times. <laughs> and then we jump ahead. Now, this is 1980. Uh, this is Big 10-inch Record, which I think is the same show as the Boston Club show. But uh, I have it, another one anyway. And then we have... Hard, which I don't know where this was recorded. It does not say. And then we have Stone Cold. Does not say where it was recorded. And I don't know off the top of my head. Sorry. And then we have another official bootleg. This is the Virginia Connection. This show is so heavily bootlegged. I mean, every other bootleg that you find of Aerosmith is probably this show. Um, but this was from Virginia in 1987, and it was a radio broadcast, so that's why it's so heavily bootlegged, because people would record the, the radio show, and then they would make copies and sell it, because that's how that works. <laughs> and this one is also on clear vinyl. And then we have When the Lightning Strikes. Uh, Long Beach Arena in California, February 6, 1988. So here's what I'm going to do. Since we're almost at an hour, it's just not going to happen. So I'll try to wrap up like about half of this because there's a couple more artists. And then we'll start the next part like at the end with the Almond Brothers. And then we'll just go forward. Yeah, I tried guys. Sorry. <laughs> And then we have F-I-N-E Live, fine, for those that don't know. Um, and this is from Copenhagen, Denmark, October 11th, 1989. So this is the Pump Tour. And then we have Live Dudes. Nassau Coliseum, January 18th, 1990, which I think there's a video bootleg of that too. Not sure. And then we have Flight of the Owl, which is from Philly, uh, 1990. There is a, a video bootleg of this, a heavily bootleg show. I don't have it on CD, and unfortunately this is not the complete show, but this is another great Aerosmith bootleg. And then we have Rock This Way, the other Rock This Way bootleg. Uh, Switzerland, August 31st, 1990, and this is on, well, there's, first of all, it's a gatefold. Shut up. <laughs> and this is on orange vinyl, which is cool. Then the last Aerosmith bootleg, we have Pure Gold .999, which is some studio outtakes from Rock in a Hard Place. And is this on a color? No, it's black. So, yeah. So what we're going to do, since we're cutting close to an hour here, let's knock out the next couple artists. So we'll do all these quick and then we'll pick up in the next part with the Allman Brothers. So we have great guitar player, very underrated always in my opinion, Albert Collins with Frozen Live. Frozen Alive, excuse me. And then this was a record store day title from last year. This is Albert Collins with The Barrel House Live. And this is on like a darker red with some marbling, which is cool. But love Albert Collins. If you have seen the movie uh, Adventures in Babysitting, Albert Collins is the guitar player. Nobody get out this place without singing the blues. So there you go. 
Then we have Alcatraz, great band. This is Born Innocent, which is their uh, one of their latest albums, which there's two versions of Alcatraz now. So, yeah, there you go. And this was a Record Store Day title in 2020. And I believe it is a color record. It is It is. Um, it is translucent blue. Both of them are translucent blue. And this is the Graham Bonnet version of Alcatraz, which, of course, he was the singer in the original lineup of Alcatraz. So, yeah, there's two versions of that band. There's two versions of L.A. Guns. There's two versions of Great White. I mean, hell, soon there's going to be two versions of Kiss, for all we know. That's what they want. So, yeah. And then we have Alcatraz Live in Japan 1984, the complete edition, which, of course, this is... The original lineup with uh, Graham Bonnet on vocals, Ingve on guitar, Gary Shea and Jimmy Waldo, who are on uh, bass and keyboards respectively, they're in that version, and then Jan Vena on drums. So, and then Steve Vai came into the band after Ingve left, and then the, the band ended for a while. All right, and then we have Alice Cooper. No introduction needed. Well, we have Killer. We have Schools Out, which did not come with the panties. Sorry. And then we have Muscle of Love, which this is the original box, the original cardboard box. And then it opens up and the record's in there with the Institute of Nude Wrestling. <laughs> Again, gotta love Alice Cooper's sense of humor, folks. And people have been being mad at him, you know, since he started. So there you go. And we have uh, Billion Dollar Babies. This is not the original pressing. It's a later pressing, but... Where is it? It does have the Billion Dollar in it. And I only paid six bucks for it, so I can't complain. And then we have the original pressing of Welcome to My Nightmare. I think you're gonna like it. And then we have, what year did this come out? 2018, this is a clear pressing reissue, which I have not opened, but can't go wrong. And then we have his rock opera from the inside when he was in rehab. He wrote that. Or no, when he was living in Hollywood. And he was like, all these people are weird, except me. So there you go. Then we have one of my favorite albums, Constrictor. Of course, you have uh, Teenage Frankenstein's on here. Uh, he's back, The Man Behind the Mask. Uh, the Great American Success Story, which was supposed to be in Back to School because it was written for the movie and they decided not to use it. Uh, Thrill My Gorilla is another great song. And then we have Dragon Town, which this is a record store day title from 2019, and it is on, uh, I think, orange vinyl, if I'm not mistaken. Then we have the Breadcrumbs EP, uh, limited and numbered. I don't think it's colored. But it has, uh, this was from the Detroit stories, so Alice got all these other guys from Detroit, like himself, to play on it. So Mark Farner from Grand Funk Railroad plays on here. Um, who else? Bob Seeger, I think, wrote some songs for the album, so there you go. But this is number 1,757 out of 20,000. Then we have uh, Live at the Apollo Theater, Glasgow, February 9th, 1982, on the Special Forces Tour. And this was a Record Store Day 2020 title. And this is numbered out of 7,000. What number it is, I couldn't tell you because it doesn't say, but yeah. <laughs> uh, previously unreleased live versions, so there you go. 
And Alice Cooper is another one that he will do a lot of stuff for record store day. So you always got to be looking out for that. And then we have Alice Cooper's Greatest Hits. And last but not least for Alice, we have Alice Cooper Classics, which is another compilation. Um, actually, throughout his entire career, there's some live stuff of the older tracks, like Poisons on here, Hey Stupid, Feed My Frankenstein, a uh, bunch of good stuff. And it is a gatefold. It's a double gatefold, actually. like and I will fix it later and it's on clear with like a blue and black splatter that's pretty cool something different <laughs> there's that and then the last two records that we're going to talk about here is my Alice in Chains stuff so first up we have uh, record store day uh, 2020 of SAP which was an EP that they did, which was mostly acoustic, uh, which that includes Got Me Wrong, which was featured in Clerks. And then I just picked this up. We have the Walmart exclusive 30th anniversary Apple Red Vinyl Edition of Dirt. Uh, one of my favorites of all time, to be honest. Rooster is one of my favorite songs of all time, favorite Alice in Chains song, and happy to have that. So that is it for this part. Um, yeah. Don't, uh, don't blame me for trying. I was going to try to get the whole row, but you know how I am. So we will pick it back up. We're still going to be in here. We're going to finish up this square here with the Almond Brothers, and then we're going to move forward however long it takes us, guys. So thank you um, for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next one, and we'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.